Hi, this is James Cook of the University of Maine at Augusta, and today we're going to continue a video series which is describing how you can take a tiny little computer called a Raspberry Pi and turn it into a machine that will grab information uh, about social media uh, and turn that information into some kind of uh, useful format from which you can engage in analysis. So, in previous uh, episodes of this series, I've described how to set up a Raspberry Pi, how to uh, put on a case, connect a keyboard, uh, how to work with uh, setting it up uh, if you're working with uh, all but the latest version of the Raspberry Pi, how to use a password, and uh, work through the operating system. Today we're going to start with the really fun stuff which involves uh, installing some software. And in order to do this we're going to uh, first we're going to set up the terminal uh, which is the text access and we're going to type in sudo sudo apt get update sudo apt get update. So when we're doing this, what the heck does that do? Uh, well, the, let's look at the first part, sudo. Sudo is, uh, stands for super user do. And this is a way of saying, hey, I really mean it. I want all of my privileges, uh, all the access to changing what the computer does. Uh, if you don't say that magic word, sudo, uh, you're not going to get uh, permission to make these basic changes to your computer. It's kind of like a computer version of Simon Says. If you don't say Simon Says in front of the rest of what you want others to do, uh, they won't do it, right? Uh, in this case, you're going to need to type S-U-D-O, indicating, yes, I'm a super user, I understand that, <laughs> and I want you to do what follows. What about the apt get uh, update? Okay, so uh, get means we're going to get something. We're going to get an update. And what is it that we're going to get? We're going to get an update in uh, lists of what the most uh, current versions of software are and where they're available from. Uh, that's all it does. But it's something that's important to do because behind the scenes, uh, on other computers and other places, there are people who are always working to make uh, software like software that runs on the Raspberry Pi better. And so we're going to type that in uh, and then you're going to see a long uh, uh, list of commands scrolling down the screen going through and um, uh, actually getting the latest lists of what the newest versions of software are and where they can be obtained from. And that's all the command is. So you've seen me uh, do that, you've watched this on the screen, and you will have noticed it happened very quickly. That's because I sped it up. It really, though, only took about a minute and a half to complete. So now we're going to actually install uh, a program, now that we have a list of what the most recent version of the program is, and uh, this program is going to be called rbase. R is a really interesting program. Um, it, some people say it stands for research, and it is something that was created by a number of statisticians and research methodologists starting um, in earnest, really, in the 1990s and 2000s, when they were confronted with really, really, really expensive um, corporate-made uh, software to run research analysis. We're talking for SAS and SPSS, uh, full-fledged versions that could cost um, up to $10,000 for uh, a site license for a university. So if you don't have $10,000 lying around, and I don't know about you, but I don't, you might want something different. And research methodologists and statisticians realized, hey, we actually have the knowledge, we know how these things work, we know what the statistical procedures are, why don't we just write a program that accomplishes this on our own? And that's what R does. We're going to install that now. Now, to get this done, you're going to uh, type in something really basic in your uh, terminal, your text interface window uh, in the Raspberry Pi. You're going to start out with sudo 
uh, for super user do this. And now you're going to type apt-get, apt-get, but it's not going to be update, it's going to be install. And then you're going to type r-base, r-base.dev. Uh, it's as simple as that, and then you have to wait a long while, as you will see with this speeded up version. Um, it, it takes a fair chunk of time for the installation to complete. But once it does complete, after a few minutes, then you'll be ready to run R. What could be simpler? Well, a few things, but this isn't that hard. Now that you've installed R, you're going to want to use it. And there are really two ways to do that on a Raspberry Pi. The first is simply in your uh, text terminal to type R. So as we do that, you'll notice that there's a series of announcements that pop up, including the all important how to quit, which is Q parenthesis parenthesis. <laughs> you'll need to know that one because otherwise you can get stuck. Well, then the prompt pops up and you could type in a command. We'll type in a print command um, that just produces some text. It, it's not in itself very interesting, I know, but oh look, it prints text. And um, that's wonderful. There are many other things you can do as well, including uh, work with uh, data, which is one thing we'll be doing later in this series. In this series. But the problem with working in R directly and typing in these commands is that once you're done, you're done. Uh, and if you want to run those commands again, you have to, boy, type them all in again. And that's not so bad when you're just typing one print command. But imagine you have, oh, about 30 commands that you want to run in sequence, and you want them to be exact, exactly the same every time, uh, so that you're careful. Well, goodness, you'd want to save them. So the way to do that is to use a text editor and to create something called a script, which is just like a script in a radio play or on a stage or in a movie. It tells the actors what to do. Well, this is just like that, except the script is telling the computer what to do. So to do that, we're going to use a text editor called Pico. And in order to save, you have to use sudo again, super user do. So this is going to be super user do sudo Pico. So the, the second word is saying this is the program we want to run, and the third word is um, uh, the name of a script, and it's going to end in .r, and it's going to say let's create it, open it, and then let's type in some commands. And you literally just do that. This is a simple, simple word processor. And you notice these commands on the bottom, they're control uh, key sequences, and with those control key sequences you can do things like cut and paste. You can also exit, which we're going to do after we type in some print commands, one per line, um, and you notice we can save them, uh, we can say multiple things, we could do multiple things, for instance with running uh, a statistical analysis, we let the computer do all that hard work. Uh, and if we save the script, we could go back and edit it and modify that script just a little bit to do different things, or we could have one script that we always use to run the same commands. Really nice, and then you save it on your computer. So you can do it again and again and again and without having to think through it and type it all in every single time. Think about it once, save it on the computer, run it again and again. And once we uh, hit control X for exit and type in, uh, yes, we want to save this, then we simply uh, type in our script uh, and the name of the uh, script that we want to run, which is handy. Uh, and once we've done that, you'll notice it produces the results that we need. So in the next uh, installation of this series, we're going to talk about uh, another program that we'll be using to collect some social media data called Python. It's already present on uh, most installations of uh, Raspberry Pi, and which is very handy. Um, and we'll see how powerful it is. It, it runs very simple commands, line by line, and it's not too hard to get it to do your bidding. But we'll talk about that next time.